It's Article 23 in your packet. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good um, evening, and thank you for being bearing yeah. with us. Um, first, would like to say that the article does relate to um, the continuation of the reval, the 2016 reval, which we're in the process of completing. Um, we've actually stepped up um, our work on that, um, but this part of the reval is as important, um, actually important probably to a lot of other um, articles that you're going to be looking at um, in the fact that um, we're trying to update <laughs> values relative to today's, to the, today's market. Um, the tax effect on a lot of these things may be and probably will be different once the revaluation gets implemented. The utility values are very important. Important in the fact that um, we're required to value all property within the town, be it exempt, residential, commercial, or utility, based on fair market value. Um, and that's one thing that, um, as far back as I know, has never been done in Hampton. And I think 2016, based on, again, market conditions, and um, everything else that's going on, it would be wise uh, this time around to value all property um, based on that requirement. Um, the cost to do this um, is 225000 Again, the effect on the tax rate, in my opinion, will actually probably be nil based on the benefits of doing that, the ability to use a value that's been uh, developed by uh, an appraiser that can be defended through the life of the revaluation, um, the cost to continue using that appraisal will also be cut based on the need to only update those values and not complete a full appraisal report again or complete an appraisal report based on the past, as we have done this past year, as you know, we spent a lot of money on retrospective appraisals based on appeals uh, pending all the way back to 2011. The cost of those appraisals are very much higher based on the need to have multiple appraisals done based on when the appeals become scheduled at the courts. We can't get five appraisals done at the same time for five different value years based on five years of appeals. We have to have those done based on when they're scheduled. Therefore, the cost, as you know, can be extreme. Ed, while you're on that subject, not to interrupt you, but how long will those appraisals be good for? What set of years? Well, the values, the values just like the reval, is based on 2016. Mm -hmm. Um, once the equalization ratio is applied years going forward, it equalizes those values to reflect uh, market value, mm -hmm. assessment to sale ratio. Um, in appeal cases, what it would require if appeals do happen, which as you know, the past five years we've right. had very many utility appraisals, it would just be a matter of updating the income and asset portion of the appraisal. Maybe the sales data, um, again, there's not a lot of sales of large utilities, but um, the cost to update is very minimal compared to a full outblown appraisal, which to incur those costs at the time of a reval is the perfect time to do that. That appraisal will be good for the five years as well as the same as the appraisal for all the other properties. It may require some updating, but the body of the appraisal. Mm -hmm would be relevant for the have entire Have we not length. been doing that? Have we been doing evaluations separate on this, so not doing these as part we, of the Well, we haven't have done, have never we, done. We've done everything but the utilities, and that really has been a problem. Yeah. I believe, you know, I've been here seven years. Um, we've never done that. We've wanted to. We've attempted to do that. We've never been able to bring forward anything like this. I think, again, based on the timing of everything, this is a perfect time to bring this up, or at least bring <coughs> values so everybody's being treated fairly and equitably, which would be everybody here that owns property. It's not fair that your relative, your your value of your property is, reflects market value when the utilities don't. 
or another type of property. But that's the case, and that's been the case for. I, I think. Is as there long any as value I, right now built in there for them? The appraisals? Yeah. I mean the utilities. Right. Well, what we do is we've We're had bringing to bringing them up to market value, but well, currently, are, we, is there any value in there? Well, there's value. We've we've attempted um, through our office and through myself is to develop a value to hopefully reflect some resemblance to market value. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, as you've seen, the appeals happen and those values that I've created or have been created through a couple of different valuation processes that don't reflect fair market value. Mm -hmm. They're not defendable, therefore we need to go out and hire somebody to do those appraisals and as you know $120,000 later this year that's what it took to defend those cases and it could have been more but what we did was settle for an extended amount of time to save costs on our end because the costs were getting a little bit out of control and to continue a yearly uh, defense of those it would have been and this would resolve that exactly yeah. The 120 was all in defense of, of assessments that we did, tried to do ourselves over the last three, four, five, six years? Or Well, it, it's not so much do ourselves, but the utilities have always been, um, again, the state gives us values, but the values are based on a unit method or a value of assets, depreciated assets, which has no relationship to market value. At least it may in some years, depending on market conditions, but what I'm saying is it's not developed through the market value approach, which we're required to do. So because of that, those values are very low. Um, for an example, um, one of the utilities, um, the state had an assessment on it of $11 million, for example. Uh, this was one that we recently settled in an appeal. Um, through, through our work at the office, we, we set a value um, quite a bit higher, of course, because we need, you know, the 11 was just not realistic. Um, when we had our appraisal done, the appraisal came in at $21 million. Our assessment was around $19 million. So we can, you can see the difference between the unit method and fair market value. Mm -hmm. So to leave $10 million on the table or whatever that value is, is not good to begin with. But then again, it's not fair. It's not equitable. It's not the way that we need to value property. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing everything else. We need to do the utilities as well. Okay. Tim, then Jerry, then Sonny, then Mike. Good evening, Ed. Evening. Um, if my memory isn't too faulty, I seem to remember that last year we put money in your budget to do an appraisal for 2016, the reappraisal. For the the residential and commercial properties, all types of property. There was, also, a, there was also an affiliated warrant article as well, relative to reappraisals, right? To the revaluation. Right. right. So this kind of stands out to me with the question of, well, why didn't we put utilities in that calculation last year? The, the reason we didn't was that, again, we, it's a very detailed, complex process. We were in the negotiating um, with several companies, several individuals to complete that process. It was not available. We had nothing concrete that we could do a warrant article last year. That's for So you had no concrete dollar number, is that what you're saying? Uh, dollar number and concrete vendor that was going to do it for us at that this point. This is a separate vendor who will be doing this. A commercial, well, uh, I'm sorry, a utility appraiser will or be Or specialized. Right, so exactly. it would not have been the same appraiser. Different process. Well, I understand that, but when, when, when it was brought to us, we were talking, and at least I got the sense that the conversation was about, well, this is going to be the cost for the state-required reappraisal of all properties in town. Okay. Other now, than, now I'm hearing. Well, that's not quite right. We didn't include utilities in there, right? Just like so. That conversation we had last year was kind of like misunderstood, at least by me, because that was going to cover the entire reappraisal of the town as required by state law. No, I didn't. Take but that. so I misunderstood that last year. I was confused, I guess. 
Right. The, the, okay. the vision appraisal was so for... So now I'm no longer confused on that point. Okay. Right. Yep. Now, it says in here the town has now received proposals for completion of these complex annual uh, appraisal reports. Correct. And then it's going to list. Those are the properties that you're talking about getting appraisals of, that list? Yes. Okay. <coughs> it also says in here that you're required to complete appraisals on all property types. Mm -hmm. uh, is this going to be the last request for money, or is there going to be some other appraisal type that I'm confused about that hasn't been put forth? It's the last appraisal type. Okay. So when you say you're required to do appraisals on all properties in town, does that also include government buildings? Yes, it does. All we right. value every property in the town of Hampton. And that includes which is easements as well, right? Everything. 90, 9,900 parcels to date that we will be valuing, reassessing, not including new development that's taking place. So, yes, we, we revalue every single piece of property in the town. So I can look forward to coming down soon and getting a total valuation of, of the easements and other lands under the custodianship of the Conservation Commission. Well, you can get that now, but you, you're talking about But I want the new to, number, yeah. That would, that those new numbers will be implemented in the summer Excellent. of 16. Thank you so much, Ed. This is the last shot for this appraisal. No more expenses. Looking forward on this, right? Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Jerry? Okay. Right. Now, this figure of 225000 yes. Ed, has this yep. been bid out, or how did we arrive at this? Well, it's, 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 I mean, it's very... Know, I mean, I, did we go out and... and well, you, you've got to understand that, that, first of all, a nuclear power plant, there are maybe three, four people in the whole country that can do those type of appraisals. Yeah. So there's really not a bidding process. Um, the, although there's three or four, we were lucky to get one from Boston who is considered one of the best to complete the appraisal for us. The other utilities, we have secured um, Steve Traub from, um, also from Massachusetts to complete all those other ones. Um, it's 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 not so much a bidding process, but a, uh, well, it's a, it's a search a, to find someone yeah, identifying willing. qualified right. assessors. And and, 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 and then, then how would you talk to them or, <coughs> or tell them what we need done and get some idea about? It? Yep, explained everything that we needed done, then the companies we needed, what we needed of those company from those companies, which which again requires uh, a lot of uh, gathering of. Financial information, yeah. asset information. I mean, it's a very drawn-out process. So did they give you something back? I mean, that's in writing that said this is what we'll do it for. Or how did that we've, we've been given um, in 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 writing the the total cost to do those appraisals. So any one of the selected two or three qualified candidates. Right. We we've, we've chosen we've chosen the two that that we feel would be best doing these and. And that's where the 225. Now, is this this warrant article doesn't break down the cost for each one of these? You have, I mean, this is 225 in total. It's like a blanket order agreement, you know. Right. So, what is every one of these? I mean, approximately, can you tell me what do they run? Um, well, the the nuclear approximation. Approximate nuclear power plant is between 100 and 150 thousand dollars. I mean, 100 and 150. Yeah. And the rest of them? The others will be between 75 and 100,000. I believe it's 85,000 is the um, determined cost for those appraisals. Isn't that out more than 225? Well, between 150 and 85. So we're, we're talking 225. I mean, I don't think it would be 150. But we have 85,000 and 140 would be 225. Well, if you so. got 100, let's say, for the power plant, and you can, you've only got 125 for the rest. I, well, six. Again, the six or eighty-five thousand for six the six. Or 85. So eighty-five hundred six is no, no together total. Together. Six oh, I'm total. sorry. I'm sorry. Ed. As a group, eighty-five thousand. Okay. One one additional question. Ed. Thank yep. you for that breakdown. The Seabrook Station nuclear power plant. Right. We have an agreement with them. I think it's called a payment in lieu of taxes. Correct. They pay us, I guess, two hundred and forty thousand a year or thereabouts for the mm -hmm. next five years. Mm -hmm. yep. Why do we bother assessing them? We're not going to get a dime benefit from it. Not a dime, because that payment in lieu of taxes is in place in two thousand and twenty. 
right? So again, we can't we can't go back to them to petition for any increase because of market value increase. So why not wait till 2020 to well, do it? Again, the reason for that is 2016's evaluation year. All properties need to be revalued, exempt, government. It it it. it it doesn't pick and choose what should be or shouldn't be. If we're going to do utilities, we need to do all utilities. That appraisal will be used in the future as a base for valuation for the nuclear power plant, our assets that are located in Hampton. It, it's, it, it's part of the process that needs to be done. All these appraisals don't look at just one year. They look at multiple years to, to wait till 2020 to do it, 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 it just doesn't work for the town. The town needs to know the value. And Ed, correct me if I'm not thinking the right way, it also will add to the base. I'm assuming that a fair market appraisal right now is higher than what it would have been a year ago. So uh, Utility-wise, yeah, I couldn't say for sure, but you would potentially assume that, yes, I would. Okay. So that that would add to the total base of our valuation. Well, the, 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 town. the town's total valuation, correct. Right. Yeah. Even more significantly, he's, he's basically making guesses at these appraisals now, and they're right. challenged. He has no no, exactly. no means of defending I'm it. Spending money. So right. we're, we're spending money having to put up a non-defense defense and basically go to the negotiation stage. By the time it's all said and done, the $225,000 he's asking for is probably spent in a larger form hidden by these activities of everyone challenging the baseless appraisals, essentially. And now we'll have a basis not, for defending not, it. And right. I mean, we, if we have the to only, defend... The only thing gonna... I would want, Ed, is that the 20, the, any subsequent reappraisal process we go through, let's have a true number rather than, you know, separate buckets that we've been experienced in mm -hmm. as a result of my confusion on this point. Okay. Right. So I am 100 percent, well, 98 percent in support of this. Okay. okay. Let's finish off with Jerry because we still have Sonny and Mike the, uh, questions. The thing that I have come to learn is that the state does appraisals for all utilities for every town mm -hmm. and city and state. And that's right. They use the unit cost method. Um, and they've evaluated, and they've got us here, Hampton, it's on their website, PRA's website, for the Seabrook, or Nextera, Nextera Energy Seabrook at 12313000 And in that PRA website, it says, um, municipalities may also utilize these values for their public utility property. So what I was driving at is, since we're not going to get a dime, it might add to our valuation. It might move us from whatever, two billion nine hundred ninety-nine thousand to some someplace beyond three billion. We're not going to get a dime from anybody because of the many uh, value added to the assessment. So for between now and then, the next time we we evaluate, which is five years, I guess, right? Well. Let's hope it's five years. It could be. It could be two. It could be three. Year two thousand and twenty. Let's do a full up assessment on. Until then, why waste one hundred twenty five thousand or a hundred thousand? We'll use the state's assessment. There are cities and towns that are doing it. The smaller ones. The fact is, those are the rules. And if we skip a year or something like that, and they come back to us and say later, well, you didn't do the reevaluation. You know, reevaluation. Well, we well, didn't do it. Got a qualified supplier. Jerry, it's about okay. expense it's just, mitigation. It's, uh, yes. All right, gentlemen. Right. Well, that's I'm my gonna, point. All right, I'm going to move to Sonny, who had his hand up, yeah, Brian. Okay. I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at it from the point of view of the voters. Mm -hmm. You're going to vote on an academy. You've got eight foreign articles here, basically. You know what I mean? What I would prefer to do is to put a one bond issue, put all these items into it, if it adds up to three million, give the voters an opportunity, you know, spell it out in English what the needs are. Because on the utilities, they're all going to file for abatements. They have lawyers on staff. They're going to fight you every inch of the way anyway. But I mean, if you, I'm just looking at it from the voters' point of view. By the time they get to your 
that warrants they're going to be a little tired. But but my point to the voters, which are you people as well, is that this this art Warren article is is very important in the in the in the, in the whole scheme of the tax rate <laughs> and the equitable layout of, of the tax rate and your taxes. Yeah, I not understand that. I'm just suggesting that you put one Warren article for a bond issue for the amount of money that you need to take care of these. And one. give the voters... It's a one clear number for every reappraisal cycle, right? <laughs> I agree. Well, listen, that, that could potentially be the case next time. The right. problem, next time. The right. problem next time. is yeah. that the town has never done this. Right. The well, town, we're breaking new ground. Right, so we've it's and taken it's us two years to do it, but... It's playing catch-up at this yeah. point. Going forward, you can yeah. put it all yeah. in yeah. one, but right yeah. now, we already passed where we are with one appraisal, and this wasn't part of it. Madam Chair, let's break ground and vote on this. No, I uh, Well, Mike has a question. Yes, and, you, and oh, I'm Jones. sorry. Keep picking up six I didn't times. see you again. Yeah. Thank you. Michael, you know, forgive fine. me, Mr. Pierce, please. Michael, I beg go of for you. it. I, uh, I agree with Mr. No Zanoy on this issue. You can't do anything with the nuclear power plant until 2020. Thanks to agreement made by the town, it's on a pilot program. Good or bad, it's there. So therefore, reappraising the nuclear power plant, they might as well reappraise, reappraise my old car. What value is it? It's worthless. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not worth a single dime to anybody in Hampton. It's not worth a single dime to the nuclear power plant people, one way or the other, well, for, until 2020. For for the total valuation of the town, for equalization purposes, for state education tax purposes, they look at the town's total value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're going to appraise everybody, and first of all, the, this is an exempt piece of property. However, we do assess it. It needs to be valued. The plant. <laughs> is paying a pilot however it needs to be valued. Any exempt property gets revalued. It's important to have a value that can be used going forward. In my opinion, it will. this Warren article will pay for itself in the fact that your assessments of all utilities will reflect fair market value, which has never been done in Hampton, ever. But the thing of it is, like Mr. Zanoy said, the state will provide you their those appraisal that, of but, the property. Yeah, but but I just been, explained to you that the time. values are so out of line that you're leaving you're leaving eight, ten million dollars on the table by using a state value that has no relationship to fair market value. If I'm valuing your property and as in to fair market value in today to for today mm -hmm. and not doing anyone else's, is that fair? Is it equitable? It's not. You're not going to be able to turn. You're not going to be able to use this to tax on a per thousand basis. Right. This new this nuclear power plant. You're going to show it your evaluation. We've about this issue for uh, four or five years. I believe we have. I agree with you. I think that it's clear how you gentlemen feel. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Bean. If when we get finished, we'll let you know. I'm sorry. I don't agree with your explanation there. Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, I excuse think me. I have the floor. No, Thank the you. chair has the floor right now. I'm calling this discussion. I haven't closed. yielded the chair to anybody yet. Well, I'm taking this. Well, you may not. Madam I've not Chair. finished my Madam question. Chair, right. The gentleman ought to be allowed to finish. Well, He's only it's, spoken it's once. It's clear. Tonight. It's clear how you feel, Mike. And Jerry, it's clear how you feel on this issue. I but I agree. I think we've had long enough discussion on this issue. And I, 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 I will yield, but not because it's fair. You let those people on the other side talk for, for many times, and it finally got to me one time, and I was on there just for a little bit. I'm very upset about that, Madam Chairman. But go ahead, do whatever you want to do. I'm going home anyway. Mr. Corden, just sit on the next side, on the other side. Yeah, sit on the other side next. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. I don't agree. I don't agree with this decision, this this parliamentary decision you're making. I don't agree with Mr. Pierce's position, but I want to hear him out. He he hasn't spoken very long at all. Madam Chair, I'd say the discussion on this Warren article. Is closed unless I there is to anyone that who has not spoken. No, I've had enough of that. You let Mr. Beam butt in all the time, which is not proper at all. No, he's Michael, not running. He's Michael, not running. He's not running, running this committee. I don't think.
Good night. Have a good one. Good night, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. with us tonight. All right, bringing it back. I think at this point in time, it's just something I want to throw out there to all of you. We're in the 11th hour, not by choice, on this budget and on these Warren articles. And if at a point you drive a point home, and once that point is made and taken, stop killing it. We don't have time left to spend an hour on every single point. Is there anyone who has not spoken on, on this particular Warren article that would like to speak? You can reflect your opinion in your vote. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> Do I have a motion? I will motion to approve as written and reviewed. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Mike's not here to, to vote. <laughs> to vote, no. <laughs> What's they left before the vote? Mike was also not here and allowed to give new wisdom that might not have been otherwise stated. Okay. But he wasn't given the chance to do it. And I seriously object to him being silenced because he might have brought up a point we hadn't discussed yet. We don't know that unless we listen. Thank you. I think at this point in time, thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Thanks. Thank you for joining us, Ed.